So it's uh, it's been another week. I hope you have, you've had a decent one. Hope you had fun better than us. This is a weird one. I, you know, it's I it's it's so hard after so many years to try and and, and convey. Yeah. Like like by this point, like, what's the scale anymore? Y'all must be unflappable by now. <laughs> if you're still around for this, you just because. I don't know. I don't know how else to to describe it. I mean, I feel like there's very little that can flap me anymore. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty hard to flap these days. Can we stop I just saying... always like that word unflappable because it it suggests that you can be flappable. Uh, can we just stop saying flap? I'm. I'm. It's okay. I, w- I would like, that, but but no, th- there's actually some stuff this week that has never happened before. Which I'm always impressed when we find something new, because like we've been at this a long time. A long time. You say so, impressed, like, I say just frankly horrified. I find it exciting that people find new and interesting ways to be just the worst. Well, let's get to some of them now. Each week, gather radio dead air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And um, we, we have made the joke several times and we have video for this about people misbehaving on the planes and the pilot saying, I will turn this plane around. Yeah. Well, folks. It happened. So this, I do not understand what the hell was going on here. But let's listen in, shall we? This actually happened on a Southwest flight. flight. That loaded up here. So here's the deal. This continues while we're on the ground. I'm going to have to pull back to the gate. Everybody's going to have to get off. We're going to have to get security involved. And it's vacation that's going to be ruined. So you folks, whatever that airdrop thing is, quit sending naked pictures. Let's get yourself (laughs) Whatever that airdropping is, bless his heart. Uh, So what happened was, uh, I don't understand why. But people on the plane mid flight started sending nudes to each other. Okay. Um, much like even, do you ever buy the Wi Fi on the plane? Because I don't. I do, because I'm that much of an addict. I don't. I just use my phone to listen to music and I read a book or something if they don't have the in-flight movies. like <laughs> Much like a road-tripping parent who's tired of the kid's backseat antics, a Southwest pilot threatened to turn his plane around and end everyone's trip if a passenger didn't stop <laughs> using airdrop to send nude fat photographs to other passengers. Uh, who does that? Um, like that doesn't count as the Mile High Club. No. Uh, let's see. What was this late? Uh, Taylor uh, Marsalis, and I gotta say, I'm not. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but this is definitely a uh, millennial spelling of of the name Taylor. Oh my god. T T E I G H L O R. Hi, you're a millennial. Why did white people decide that every A sound or E sound has to be E-I-G-H sometime in the last 10 years when you're naming a kid? Like, why did we do that? So anyway, Taylor told the outlet that she and some friends had just boarded the plane when they received a notification of an anonymous file being shared via an airdrop. She Mm -mm. declined the photo. A couple of women accepted it and showed her the picture. 
Why are you accepting random shit from no one? It was a nude man that had airdropped himself to everyone. Airdrops feature on Apple devices. <laughs> Padding the word count there. Um, so, all right. You're sa- they don't specify, but I'm trying. Oh, wait, airdrop doesn't require Wi-Fi? No. It, just, it, it, goes, between, uh, it goes between Apple devices. Because that's yeah, I mean, I airdrop pictures from my phone and my computer all the time, but I thought it needed the Wi-Fi. No, it just works in terrible, terrible ways. So this guy sent nudes of himself to everyone on the plane? Apparently, which sure certainly makes it really easy to figure out who the fuck is doing it. You know, you'd be surprised, because I have done online dating, you'd be surprised how many dudes send nudes without their face in them. Now, that, I, I, I think that's just a dick pic, and that's harassment. They'll, dudes will send, like, the neck down, or just, like, the chin down, because they're too fucking stupid to know how to take a picture, or they know that their face isn't their biggest draw. But, yeah, it, it, dudes do that. I don't know why. I mean, I guess I just gave a couple of hypotheses as to why, but don't do that. Am I, I somehow I have to sometimes I have to wonder, am I not working right? Because I don't do these things. Did I miss a memo? Maybe. Was I not there for that day of orientation? Because like, man, being a woman on dating sites, it's just it's like that first scene of Reservoir Dogs. Dick, 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 dick. Like I, I was never, never informed. I was never informed. I had to take pictures of my dick and send it to people. I didn't know this was a requirement. Apparently, that's what they teach dudes when they separate you in health class. But we're too old for that because cell phones didn't <laughs> exist yet. That might be your problem. <laughs> that might be it. Yes. Because apparently, when they separate the girls and the boys now, what they're teaching the boys is the art of the dick pic. I mean, well, this. You're taking a picture of yourself and you're harassing people. You're going to be stuck in a tube with those people. Yeah. For the next few hours. I don't think this is going to work out how you thought it would. What's what was the goal here? I, I guess sex, but. That's really just like, you know, it, it's. There used to be a thing, and it's kind of like, it, it, it's, it's considered uh, bad etiquette. Like, if you're streaming, especially over on Twitch, um, if someone comes into your channel and starts advertising their stream to everybody, and they think they're doing a smart thing that will get attention, but no one actually likes it. In fact, everyone fucking hates it. It's the same thing. They think they've had a brilliant idea and in fact no you and here's the thing like lads i don't want to disappoint you but there are few parts of the human anatomy as objectively ridiculous looking as your dick let's just be honest about it it's not they're not pretty to this day they're, i they're I, fun but they're not they're not fun for looking at really to this day i still remember there's an episode of red dwarf where a robot character is made human suddenly and he's examining he he's he he he's like this is the design this is what they went with the last chicken in the <laughs> shop window look this is the final yeah, Dan, Dan used to say they look like they look like they're made out of leftover elbow skin. God, no. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. They're fun. I'm not I'm not anti dick. OK, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a mostly hetero female and pro dick, but they're not. It, they're almost certainly not the best looking part of you. All right, this next one, I was I, I I was viscerally angry when this happened today. If you're if not, they were 
Well, that would be awesome. As I understand it, with cold enough water, they are. So if you've been following um, what's going on in the UK, um, Brexit has fucked them, is pretty much what it comes down to. Right now, their energy costs are spiraling, skyrocketing. People cannot afford to keep their, you know, to lights on. They're in like an epic heat wave. And winter is air conditioning is not standard there because they don't get epic heat waves. I, I mean, it's a cliche, but winter is coming. Um, so I saw this today, and this was just this flames on the side of my face. Jesus H. Fucking Christ. There's a show there called This Morning. And they're having a competition to potentially pay your energy bills. Oh. And the, you know how they do it? You spin a wheel. And if it lands on energy bills, they'll pay your energy bills for four months. So they've, they've made it a game show. What? We are in a dystopia. Yes, like it's it's and it's so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. Like, can we be far from when we're actually having like prison inmates do the fucking death race for TV? Like, this is like right up. This is the running man. This is fucking goddamn fucking running man kind of shit. Yeah. Like, how far can we possibly be from that at this point? What's really like, we're probably still at least a half a century from the Hunger Games, but like the Running Man and Death Race. What's if we don't do, if we don't fix some shit, I think it's within the decade. What's really telling here is this went through an entire group of people. They pitched this. They thought it was a great idea. They, no one, not one single person involved in this chain, stopped and said, "Um." Which kind this of tells you up. what? Nobody was like, this is fucked up. No one, which, which tells you just exactly where everyone who works at the show is on the social ladder. And that, you know, it's a real big let them eat cake energy here. And yes, I know that's, that's largely, you know, not, not a real thing that happened. Shut up. Let them eat cake. That's what this is. So. Wasn't there, who were the celebrities a few years ago that were going to do like a reality show? Was it for nonprofits? I, where like I, you had to like pitch them why you should, why they yeah. should give you money. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the press release went out, the backlash was so fierce that all the celebrities immediately pulled out. Do you not have an intern? Like, I will say, you know, you're probably not paying your assistant that well. Maybe before you do this project, you should ask your assistant on their way back from getting your latte. What they think. Chow says wheel of debt forgiveness. Yes. You know, I will give John Oliver this. When he decided to wipe out a bunch of people's medical debt. He didn't make it a game. He didn't make it conditional. He didn't make it, you know, he's, he's like, just here you go, folks. Doing a nice thing for you. Not this, this is. I would love to have a look at like the budget and expense reports for his show. Cause he blows that HBO money yeah. on some fantastic and absurd shit. And I'm here for it. But this is just, this is, this is, I mean, at least they're not making people do like the double dare physical challenge for it. Do you that want? Would be worse. Do you want guillotines? Because this is how you get guillotines. Like, at least they're not actively humiliating people for it. But this isn't just because it's not that bad doesn't mean it's great. You, you know th what's terrible is this next one. This is actually a more dignified way of getting cash, and that's saying something. Um, this one comes from Washington State. 
Hey, Simba. You know, I actually have to appreciate this guy's hustle. Um, just a little bit. Man, fishing for cash at bank drop boxes behind bars. Man, officials say was fishing for cash at more, at more than a dozen banks across Sonoma County, including uh, Bothell and Mount Vernon. It's now behind bars. Officials say 27-year-old Sean Stewart has been on his fis- fishing expedition for months. They started back in January. Court documents say Stewart had been using a rodent glue trap attached to a fishing hook and fishing line to get money out of night deposit boxes. That's <laughs> smart, though. That's smart, though. Like, except that there's a camera on the night deposit box. Like, It's, it's stupid and brilliant at the same time. You just thought to blind the cameras? <laughs> it's like, it's like the I mean, the other problem is chances are it's some low-level manager getting in trouble for stealing a night deposit, and that's not great. Um, at Wells Fargo, Snohomish. Yeah, it's uh, Sh- Snohomish County, I believe. Um, Wells Fargo and Stanwood police say Stewart was unsuccessful. I believe the bank, uh, the bank found one of Stewart's traps stuck to a deposit bag. July came to Stanwood, tried to do it in Stanwood, didn't get anything. We got some video of him. About all his yeah. temps, he didn't get away with much. Now, that That's the downside of it. It wasn't very effective. But bless your heart, that is outside the box, isn't it? It was creative. It was. It was, uh, we haven't seen that one before. Do you know about the cash nip kitty? I, I do not. I don't know if they still do it. There's a graphic design firm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they have an office cat and they have double glass doors. And I don't know how they figured this out, but the cat will just sit at the doors and cry. And for some reason, people started putting dollar bills in between the doors to play with the cat and he would steal them. (laughs) So it became a thing. So they started advertising it and they donate all the money to the local homeless resource center whatever the cat collects and like people now go by and like give the cat a dollar and he'll steal your dollar. And then whatever they collect up, they donate to the homeless, which is great. Like you've turned it into a wonderful thing, but what you really need is that cat on the string. <laughs> I, I mean, can you just imagine you're walking by one night on the street and there's a dude with a fucking fishing rod at the night deposit box? What is it? Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll try to rob a bank. <laughs> Crazy Bruce, that was beautiful. I mean, that's using the skills you have. True. (laughs) And technically, it's burglary, as we all know, thanks to Scott Lang, because robbing implies violence. Hmm. I, okay, we've got one from uh, Canada here. You know, a long, long time ago, I guess people still kind of do this these, these days, um, You'd find, like, you have a girlfriend or something, you find, like, a tree or a park bench, and you'd carve your initials in there and kind of be like, and, you know, of course, every time you ever do that, it's like, that's almost cursing yourself immediately to break up. Shit like that. It's like the couple's tattoos. Right, yeah. Um, This is a new twist on that. And I don't, I don't understand. I do not, I do not understand. West Shore, Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrest bathroom vandals who burned names into toilet seat. RCMP said... something about your self-esteem. RCMP say two people were arrested after allegedly vandalizing a public bathroom in Langford this week, leaving their names burned into a toilet seat. This recalled a Centennial, pa- Centennial Park uh, for a well-being check of two people lying on the ground near a tennis court. 
Bystander reportedly witnessed the individuals ingesting drugs in the public bathroom at the park and was concerned for their well-being. According to the police, officers located a 40-year-old man, a 31-year-old woman, who allegedly appeared to be under the influence of drugs but were not in medical distress. Police say a search of the bathroom revealed the names of the man and woman burned into the toilet seat with garbage can with a garbage can removed from the bathroom and found next to the suspects. What? I know, right? Can you imagine being this cop? <laughs> Listen, shut the fuck up Friday doesn't work <laughs> when you leave your name in written evidence. Burned. Burned. That is some deliberate, you know, someone yeah. they're, they're getting down they're like okay i've got to plan this out let's make this forever a public bathroom so whenever someone puts their ass here they'll think of us and our love i have never wanted to spend long enough in a public bathroom to do that god no even the really nice ones i've used the bathrooms at the fucking waldorf astoria where you basically, the stall has a sink, like it's your own little yeah. private bathroom. They're lovely. I didn't want to spend any longer in there than I had to. Like, I don't, I, I, I think this is like a, a, a reflex of anyone who's ever been in a public bathroom, which is pretty much everyone. You immediately start breathing through your mouth. Yeah. The moment you enter a public bathroom, you, your nose. You don't have to touch anything that right. you don't have to. Right. And here they are just, Arts and fucking crafts. Like, if you carry any kind of bag, you are praying there's a hook. Yeah. So you don't have to put it on the ground. What the, what in the, what the, what the fuck drugs make you do this? I want to know so I never take them in any fucking circumstance. This is quite literally like, what the fuck are you smoking? In a bathroom in a public park. Like, I don't know oh. if Canada has idyllic public park bathrooms. Like, I don't know if Canada's public bar ba park bathrooms are much nicer than America's. But in America, public parks are funded through the government. Which you can imagine how much the bathrooms get cleaned on that budget. Leslie Nope is not in there scrubbing the bathroom every day. Like... Public park bathrooms are kind of like, you know, I think I'll hold it. Yeah. That's that's one of those. Then, like, hold a garbage can? Why? Is the garbage can your friend now? What the fuck are you on? Were you like hallucinating that it was R2D2? How do you, this garbage can would look really great in the living room. <laughs> really tie the room together. <laughs> <laughs> Probably has got pee on it. Everything in the public bathroom has pee on it. It's 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 oh it's not Abby goes so many spiders. You're not you're not wrong. Oh yeah, the public the, the public park is one of those it's just barely indoors. So Yeah. The public park we used to play in when I was a kid literally had a black widow infestation. Yeah, like it was known, like you didn't go through the tunnels and stuff because it was a problem like for years. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, OK. Speaking of drugs, this this seems this was oh, this was just setting up for uh, they are. I'm amazed a catastrophe did not come out of this. Is all I can say. Officer sees a shipment of baby wipes that turned out to be eleven point eight million dollars worth of cocaine. Oh, the I look, mean, the look on your face! Rash. What? Your baby's diaper rash won't hurt them <laughs> if you just rub some cocaine all over their ass. Shipment of baby wipes at the U.S. Mexico. I mean, those little bitches infested the tunnels in the playground. They did. Mm -hmm. Little Russian spies everywhere. 
shipment of baby wipes at the U.S.-Mexico border turned out to be something quite different. $11.8 million worth of cocaine. Uh, U.S. Customs Border Protection officers seized the narcotics Friday at the uh, Columbia Solidarity Bridge. Um, officers from uh, Customs Border Patrol sent a trailer truck, uh, which claimed to be carrying um, only baby wipes for a second inspection. Okay. They did the whole comma splice thing there. Um, then a canine and non-intrusive inspection discovered uh, resulted in the discovery of one thousand. What is non-intrusive in quotes? Yeah, I know. It's like uh, uh, discovery of one thousand nine hundred thirty-five packages of around one thousand five hundred thirty-three pounds of alleged cocaine. Okay, how is it alleged cocaine? <laughs> it either is or is not cocaine. So there's like some hot dogs and rolls math there. 1,533 pounds in 1,935 packages. <laughs> That's the worst word problem I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> How much cocaine is in each package? <laughs> Flashback to fifth grade math. <laughs> this, okay, they caught it. Yay. This could have resulted in some terrible dark shit. I just, just, I ain't gonna go say what it could have, because this, fuck, what the fuck were you thinking? I mean, I'm just gonna say if the diaper rash is really bad. A thin coating of cocaine might not be the worst thing. Well, okay, but we applied. Yeah. I mean, that's okay, but that's probably not. Someone's parents rubbed whiskey on her gums when she was teething, so. Okay, there's a big difference between whiskey and cocaine, though. It's fucking cocaine. I mean, drugs a drug. I want to know who pitched this. Where, where did, where, did they have like you know their 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 weekly meeting? Someone pulled out the whiteboard and was like, "Okay, here's how we're moving it this week, everybody. We're using baby wipes." I want to know where they got the baby wipe packaging. Right? Like, did they? Was there a heist? <laughs> And the baby wipe factory for just the packaging? Well, what, great, Carl. What are we going to do with these? And now, then what happened to all the baby? Or if they had to steal the whole thing, do they just have like a mountain 15 of baby rubber made tubes of baby wipes? Like, I have a lot of questions. Why don't you just throw them away? Those are perfectly good wipes. We're going to use those, okay? We don't have to buy toilet paper for months. <laughs> I just, I, how did, th th that's a, fuck me. All I think is I just have the, the image in my head of tr things should go tragically wrong. Don't do this. Yeah. Come on. There's got to be a more dignified and less child involved method. Because like this, 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 this fella back here, this guy. Oh my God. What? <laughs> His eyes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Simba. What's wrong with his eyes? They were fucking glowing green right into the camera. Are they? Yeah, they I'm were. Sorry. I was just like. <laughs> sorry. But uh, he's not going to like me sharing this with you, but he's not so good at cleaning his butt. He's, he's got a little extra in the middle. I know, <laughs> I know it's embarrassing. I'm sorry. So sometimes he needs his butt cleaned and we use baby wipes for that. I'm trying to imagine Simba on cocaine and that's probably not a good thing. Uh, listen, Simba was on steroids for a while for his asthma. And you have never seen a cat with roid rage. It was dark times. 
That's why he's on an inhaler now. Give him cocaine, be like a fucking Tasmanian devil. Yeah. All right. Last one this week. What in the entire fuck is all I can say once we get to, once we get to the pilot lands after threatening to crash into Mississippi Walmart. I saw this. Pilot yeah. of a plane circling in the skies over Mississippi on Saturday morning and repeatedly threatened to crash it into a Walmart in Tupelo. This landed the aircraft in Ashland. Pilot is also alive. Pilot is believed to be operating a Beechcraft plane been flying over Tupelo as early as 5, 5 a.m. Central. Pretty calls made by the Tupelo Police Department. Witnesses shared the video on Twitter said the uh, aircraft been flying in circles over the city. The pilot subsequently contacted police, informing them of intentions to crash into the Walmart on West Main Street. Police was talking directly to the pilot. Two parties engaged in, quote, negotiations. The Walmart was evacuated, as were the surrounding stores. Police also asked the public to avoid the area near the Walmart. Statement provided to Nexstar. Walmart confirmed the evacuation, as well as the company's cooperation. Approximately 10.30, the plane had landed in a field in Ashford. There were no injuries. The pilot is in custody. What the... The fear was that he actually ran out of gas. Because from what I read, the type of plane can hold about six hours worth of gas, and he was up there for a little more than five. Mm -hmm. So supposedly, he was running out of gas. And that's why he put the plane down where he did. But... Why in the first place are you, why are you, what the f Like, listen, I am a person with mental illness. Yeah. I get it. I, I have never understood. I understand how somebody can want to not be here. Mm. I have never understood the impulse to take a bunch of people with you. Well, for me, it's, it's. You're calling the cops to announce the shit. Yeah. What in the hell are you doing? Because that's... I charge him as a terrorist. I think he actually is being charged yeah, with making that's... terrorist threats because that is yeah. literally an act of terrorism. Like, I, I, I don't know if you just got here, but... You're looking a, to do a little baby 9-11. Yeah, in America, oh, about, say, 20 or so years mm -hmm. ago, there was a day when something happened with a plane, and ever since that, we've been, let's say, a little touchy on the subject. I've not gotten over it. Nope. I, I just, why in the goddamned hell? Yeah, and I think if I heard he was, he worked at the airport, like he was the guy that fueled the planes, so he had access, and that's how this happened. But like, I, yeah, that's the why? I can't make sense of like, why do it? Why call the cops? Why threaten to take out a Walmart? A wall, a fucking Walmart of all goddamn looks. I'm not no fan of the Waltons, but Jesus Christ, it's the fucking Walmart. Yeah. Like, yo. Know. Everybody working in there and half the people shopping in there are miserable enough. Yep. Mm hmm. They don't need your help. The Waltons just bought the Denver Broncos. Mm. Denver is fucking apoplectic. They're not happy. <laughs> I could give a fuck about football, but Denver people take the Broncos very seriously. And they're not amused. There's one that, I'm just, I'm baffled by this one. Yeah. I, like, was he trying like a cry for help situation? Was he trying to accomplish something? Was this a political thing? Was this what? Apparently, it wasn't at all political. Mm. From what, like, once they released his name, of course, the internet does what it does. And from what we found, like, he was not in any way a political person. So it seems like a cry for help scenario, but there's the Walmart, though. Yeah. 
Of There's way fucking, better ways to do that. Of all the fucking things, just Jesus, what the fuck? What the what the fucking what the fuck fuck fucking fuck? Come on! I think that, that's the best response I have. To, oh, come on! Yeah. What the? Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a member of the Walmart fan club either. Right. I don't think I, like there was. Uh, I I didn't use the story because it, it went by so fast. But there was a uh, a Walmart in Atlanta uh, about a week or so back. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks back. That um, a fourteen year old girl lit the the uh, office supply section on fire, and it burned down most of the fucking Walmart. Nobody was hurt. Everybody got out of there, but it took a good chunk of the Walmart with it. The thing I just really want people to remember, you're not fucking over the Waltons. No. You're fucking over the people that work there that already don't make enough money. The Waltons are insured. Right. Like, you're not hurting them. You're hurting all those people in a blue vest who just got to pay the bills. Retro K238. Uh, 283, sorry. Uh, what the flying fuck is wrong with you? Exactly. Exactly. Man, I don't even like the. I don't like being in the Walmart at all. I, I don't even have that much of a grudge against the goddamn place, you know. It just gives me anxiety. Like it's too vast and big and full of stuff. Like Target, I like because Target is yeah. broken up into nice digestible chunks. Yeah, if you I, know, if I was very little sectioned, I walk into Walmart and I feel like I'm in the fucking warehouse from Readers of the Star, and I just freak out. If if. If I don't like the Walmart, I just don't go. I, yeah. I, don't... I generally do not go. When I was in Missouri, that was kind of the only place to get necessities. So I had to go. And it's in Mississippi. You have enough. People in Mississippi have enough fucking problems as is. Right? That's what I remember hearing this. I was like, like, people don't even have water and you're pulling this shit on them. That's the first thing we learned this week. It, it, the Walmart's not worth it, man. No. Fuck's sake. What are your thoughts on Costco? I don't like going to Costco alone. I would go with Dan. I still have the membership. I haven't tried going alone yet. We'll find out. I might make the show. We've learned that if, if you are, in fact, going to be smuggling narcotics and or other contraband, do not use the baby products as a method of doing so. Just leave babies out of it. We've had fake pregnancy bellies. Just just leave the babies out of the drug dealing. Um, we've learned whatever drug would compel you to, to burn your name into a park toilet seat is is a bad drug. I don't do that drug. I, they don't we they don't say what the drug is, but we know. There, there is one drug that does that. Don't we all We're know? Kind of show that's going to say don't do any drugs because you know live oh. your best life. No, yeah. Don't do whatever that drug is. Which is I am staunchly anti meth. It's fucking. It's always fucking meth. That, it doesn't seem to be an upside to meth. It, we have fun drugs. We do. Yeah. They're not. And I, look, I don't think anyone ever lost their teeth smoking a joint. Your lungs might get a little bu fucked up, but come on. Um, we've learned that if your paraphernalia for robbing a bank includes a tackle box, I don't think it's going to work out the way you think it's going to work out. But good on genuity. We've learned that the upper class sees nothing wrong with with uh gamifying the crumbling yeah the, the society falling to pieces and 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 the, the financial peril of the lower classes they're making it fun and finally we we've learned that yes they will in fact turn this plane around 
It's Southwest too. They like their whole brand is like, we're super nice. We're not douche nozzles like the other airlines. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, no, you wouldn't be surprised. When someone puts a dick in your face, you weren't wanting it. it the niceness yeah. just leaves the situation entirely. Fair, true. Absolutely true. Surprise dick will really change your demeanor. Like it, it's it's that's a fast way to just, you know, ruin the party. <laughs> or the flight. Fucking Apple's got to do something about that, man. Jesus. I didn't know that was an option. I, I don't. I, I, I didn't know I could just send the whole plane pictures of my cat. Oh, God. That is not a euphemism. I literally mean pictures of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> 